Well, hello again, everybody. It's Sophia Mona Lisa of the Roseville Mystery School. And I want to welcome you back to part three of so much to be grateful for in 2023. <laughs> now, I said I thought this would be three parts, but I'm here to tell you it's actually going to be four parts. So there'll be one more part after this piece. So I hope you'll come back for that last part as well. So we talked about the quantum timeline series that showed up in June uh, as a part of the part two piece of this. And so now I'm going to move into July, see what happened in July. Whoosh. What happened in July was an event that happens once a year. And this is, is an event when the sun stands right across the sky from Pluto. What was particularly unique about this opposition is that the sun was at 29 degrees of Cancer and Pluto was at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And these 29 degree points are the mastery points of the astrological signs. And so, for instance, uh, you know, sometimes when they have their oppositions, they'll be, you know, maybe in the first through 10 degrees or the 10 through 20 degrees, you know, but to have it at the 29 degree point is really very special. And in the video journal that I did around this event, I talked to, about it kind of like this. I think the word is fission. I always get fission and fusion uh, confused. But it's when the particles come together, boom, and they create a whole new world. And so this is exactly what happened uh, in July with this opposition. Then in August, we had that Capricorn Leo goddess metamorphic seed point that I talked about in part two. This is when the 12th strand of DNA came online. And this is when those of us in the retreat awakened our Christ hearts. And of course, this is the goddess Sekhmet, as I mentioned in uh, part two. She is our Leo divine royalty goddess. Now, the other thing that happened here in August is that Venus rose, as we call her, the morning star. In that first phase, the descent phase, she's in the sky as the morning star. In the third phase, which is the ascent phase, she's in the sky as the evening star. And what happened at this time is I got a, a new piece of wisdom from Sophia. Uh, traditionally, particularly in shamanic astrology, uh, we talk about the Virgo Pisces pathway as the path of the sacred helpmate. And Sophia explained to me that because of the uh, elevation of frequencies that we have been undergoing, that she now wanted me to speak to this pathway as the path of the Sophia Christ consciousness, uh, specifically the Virgo side. And of course, we know that Virgo is all about being in sacred service uh, to the divine feminine. Uh, so the Virgo side is the Sophia consciousness. And then the Pisces side, which we know is all about the unified source field, uh, is um, related to the Christ consciousness. So everything happening on that Virgo Pisces pathway is really engaging the Sophia Christ consciousness. And over the course of the year, with various activations, we began to see the relevance uh, of this Sophia Christ conscious, uh, excuse me, the Sophia Christ pathway in terms of what was unfolding through our new 
Leo divine royalty goddess journey. Now in October, which was a huge month for many reasons, one of which was that the sacred masculine represented by Mars descended into the underworld in his Mars synodic cycle. And remember, synodic cycle is just a fancy word for dance with the sun. So in Mars's dance with the sun, which takes place over 24 months, this was the phase where he was descending into the underworld. And when he did that, he dropped into the underworld from these Libran energies. And what that tells us is what the overall theme of his underworld journey was going to be. Now, this happened on October 1st. He is still in the underworld. He will not be coming out of the underworld until January. So you can see that this is quite a long journey through the underworld, um, a little over three months uh, in the underworld. And so what we know from him descending into the underworld from those Libra, uh, Libra energies, right, are all about harmony, peace, balance, is that the sacred masculine's journey through the underworld is to bring the balance of power back to the masculine energy on our planet. So what does that mean? Well, you have to know that the masculine energy on our planet is patriarchal energy. It's not sacred masculine energy. That means, patriarchal energy means that the sacred masculine has been perverted. And it has been perverted in order to control and to dominate and to conquer. And so... The sacred masculine is like, we're done with that. We are moving up. We are moving on. And so we've got to get the power back. And so this whole underworld journey for the sacred masculine is to shift the power away from the patriarchal energy. And remember, that was initiated by the dark forces. They are the ones that perverted the sacred masculine energy and made it patriarchal. And as we shift the power away from the patriarchy and we bring it back to Christ, that balance of power is coming back into that sacredness. So this is the overarching theme of this entire three plus month underworld journey uh, for the sacred masculine. Now, also in October, I did a very powerful video journey, journal called The Beacons of Gondor Have Been Lit. And I will put the link to that in the description box below. And if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Now, there were many things that brought this about. Um, the primary catalyst of everything that unfolded after it in October was that ring of fire solar eclipse that took place in Libra. Remember, October 1st, sacred masculine descends into the underworld from Libra. And now we have this ring of fire solar eclipse in Libra. And it is the second eclipse on that new pathway, the Aries Libra pathway of conscious equal partnership that I spoke to you about in part one, in terms of that first one showing up in April. Okay. What happened through this ring of fire event is that all kinds of things started coming forward and revealing themselves to me in bits and pieces by Sophia. Uh, one of the pieces that she brought forth for me is the lost wisdom about the alchemical 
astrological aspects. And that has to do with the fundamental aspect of the opposition being an alchemical aspect. What I discovered from there is that there are other alchemical aspects from the opposition. We get the T square. It's an alchemical aspect. From the opposition, we get the grand cross. It is an alchemical aspect. We've had all kinds of rare aspects showing up this year. Very potent, rare aspects one of which is the kite. It's an alchemical aspect. And one of which is the Chinese puzzle box. It's an alchemical aspect. And so the other thing that came forward were the dragons. They were ready through this ring of fire eclipse to come back into conscious equal partnership with humanity. And I talk a lot about how the dark forces removed their consciousness from within humanity and replaced it with the fear around the evil serpent in the Garden of Eden. And, Eden. and so I encourage you to go back. If you're interested in that and watch those video dragons, uh, excuse me, video journals. <laughs> But the dragons have come forward. And since they came forward, it has been amazing how relevant and how resonant they are with each of the aspects that have continued to unfold since then and the work that I am doing. Now, the dragon that was a part of this ring of fire solar eclipse that uh, brought back this awareness that they were ready to come into conscious equal partnership with us was this orange dragon. So let me take a moment here to say, um, and I've said it before, but she deserves lots of accolades that uh, these dragon cards, this dragon oracle deck that I'm using was created by Diana Cooper. I absolutely love her work. And the information on these slides is just a small part of what she shares around these dragons in her Oracle book. Um, I just pick out the pieces that I resonate with in the moment. But the big thing about the um, this orange dragon that was a part of this ring of fire uh, solar eclipse is that it brings soul families and communities together. And that's huge because we are now in this eclipse series of the path of conscious equal partnership. And so uh, you're going to be finding your soul families. You're going to be finding your soul tribes as we start to become more and more of a global uh, community that you can work with. And so um, this is really uh, spectacular because we see here that these fifth dimensional com uh, communities, uh, oh, that the dragons bring fifth dimensional communities together. And of course, all my work in the Galactic New Earth Project has been about uh, the new earth 5d plus reality and so with these dragons bringing fifth dimensional communities together this ties directly into the theme of conscious equal partnership where communities um, uh, are made up of people who can cooperate with each other help each other practice harmony and oneness this is absolutely all about those Libran energies. So it was really exciting to see this dragon uh, come forward. The other thing that happened is that there was a complete uh, shift in terms of our relationship with Mercury, the cosmic messenger. Now, 
through patriarchy, uh, Mercury, or also known as um, Thoth or Hermes, was a messenger for the gods, right? The gods on Mount Olympus or whoever the gods were, right? But Mercury made it very clear that he is also, like the dragons, was ready to come back into conscious equal partnership with humanity. And so in this new rule, uh, new role that he's playing, being in conscious equal partnership with humanity as a whole, with us personally, he is really facilitating uh, the transmissions between our higher selves and uh, and our uh, personality selves, egoic selves. And so he's translating those broadcasts from our higher self to us so that we can get those messages uh, that are guiding us and inspiring us in terms of coming into knowing ourselves as those divine beings. The other thing that happened at this Ring of Fire event that to me demonstrates such a profound uh, depth of compassion by source for humanity is that the is the quantum leap forward that took place now we know that eclipses by nature are getting us back on our evolutionary path you know it's just like when you're driving you might like go meandering to check out what's over here and check out what's over there and Eventually, you're going to have to get back on the right path to go wherever you're going. But because of all of the interference from the dark forces, humanity's evolution has really been held back. And so when this eclipse, ring of fire eclipse happened in October, what happened is that our evolution made this quantum leap forward from where we had been held back to where we would have been had the dark forces not interfered. That was a huge quantum leap forward. This was phenomenal. And for me, was overwhelming to think of the love, the mercy, the compassion that was pouring forth from source through all of these uh, luminary bodies that were, you know, acting as instruments as a part of this cosmic dance to facilitate humanity being brought forward to where we would have been had we not had the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of interference by the dark forces. Now, I also discovered in October that Christ, the cosmic Christ, and Yeshua, our inner Christ, were moving together in the underworld through the Scorpio frequencies. And I had this big experience, which is a part of the beacons of the Gond uh, the beacons of Gondor have been lit journal where I talk about Operation Scorched Earth. If you want to know about it, go watch the video. But I discovered in the space that was created through Operation Scorched Earth, all these downloads came in around what was happening with Christ and Yeshua in the underworld in these scorpion frequencies. And what I received is that they were moving through the bowels of the evil on our planet 
to clear out all of the blocks that had been put in place by the dark forces through that matrix to keep humanity from knowing their divine self. So remember what I said, the big theme where it's a shift theme for the underworld journey. It's a shift of power from patriarchy back to the sacred masculine energies. And this, this mission here, as Christ and Yeshua were going through these Scorpio energies was very much a part of that. Meanwhile, while Christ and Yeshua were, you know, clearing out all the blocks that the dark forces had put in place across the sky, Jupiter in Taurus, the cosmic guru was amplifying their Christ light to facilitate the rooting out the source of all of those lower frequency energies from the dark forces, right? Rooting out the source of the evil on earth. This was all happening in October. This is profound. The other thing that I discovered, because remember I said Christ and Yeshua were moving through Scorpio. Jupiter was over in Taurus is I got a whole new download. I'm trying to find a place to put this. Hold on a second. Regarding this Taurus Scorpio axis. Because in October, we had right after that ring of fire eclipse, uh, we had an eclipse later in the month on the Taurus Scorpio axis, which was the very last eclipse on that pathway of intensity that completed that series of seven eclipses over the past two, maybe two and a half years. Now in our Galactic New Earth project with this new Leo divine royalty goddess journey, we are now working with alchemy. Um, I as an alchemical creation, I priestess have been trained in alchemy. My soul sister, Maureen, who has been through the same um, priestess, high priestess uh, processes as a part of my same lineage with Nicole Christine, did an even more in-depth piece on alchemy. She's teaching that for us. But through this whole process where I was getting these downloads about what Christ and Yeshua were doing in the underworld, all of this information uh, about this Taurus Scorpio axis and how alchemy is built into it uh, was coming forth, was information that I've not in any of the teachings that I had had received from any of the teachers. This came in uh, straight from Sophia about the alchem alchemy that's built into this specific axis. And so that was a huge piece of wisdom that was received as well. And so, oops, got a little ahead of myself. I'm going to complete part three here. And uh, thank you for watching this with me. And I hope that you will come back for part four, which is definitely the final part of this whole series of so much to be grateful for in 2023. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.